Business Brain, episode 455 for Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take different things in our lives, our businesses, our personal lives, And we run them through the business brain filter, easy for me to say, so that we get a different perspective, a better perspective, a more valuable perspective on these things. And the path is it helps us keep living that charmed life. Sponsors for this episode include checker.com slash business brain. That's C-H-E-C-K-R dot com slash business brain, where you can save 40 bucks off your first background check and Notion Projects, a new thing from Notion. You can try it for free today at Notion.com slash Business Brain. We'll talk more in depth about each of those shortly. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. How are you, man? Yeah, I'm good. You know, just like it's rock and roll. And it's, it's always yeah. weird having, I, I, I liked the long weekend. I didn't like the short work week last week and yeah yeah that's yeah. all so that's I, true you know it's, uh, yeah it's tough yeah I, I was gone for a few days working on a property that we have and i feel i love unplugging and going but right coming back you're just like oh wow i've got to you pay for got to deal with this and yeah you you pay for it no matter how, how many, it is uh, yeah but it's, it's the charmed it's life good. though like we get to do it these is, things it it's is. fine yeah it's it's fine yeah yeah the flexibility is amazing Oh, um, agreed. There is no, there is no freedom as we've talked about, but the flex yeah. is, is, uh, incredible, priceless and a huge part of the charmed life that you always mention. I, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's so, good. uh, good. uh, listener David wrote in and because he wrote into feedback at businessbrain.show, he, he will be entered into our drawing for a MacBook air. We need to decide now after, uh, earlier this week, we need to decide, is that a 13 inch air or a 15 inch air? I, <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, and, and David wrote in, he says, um, we sent an email to our corporate, our company's mailing list, uh, and our, which has customers in it, I would presume, a few weeks ago. He says, I thought you might find it interesting. Uh, we sent this out, we mailed this out as part of a newsletter years ago, and I resurrected it for the email blast recently. It starts with, according to Forbes magazine, there are certain things you can say that will leave a lasting impression, but not necessarily the right one at work. It's probably better if you don't say the following six things. The first one, Shannon, it's not fair. Don't say oh, yeah. that at work. Life's no. not fair. N- yes. Nothing is fair, and uh, <laughs> you're not going to get anywhere talking like that or no, thinking like that. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I like it. Um, yeah, life's not fair. No, And there's no point in in complaining, and you don't want to have a culture of complaining, right? It, yes. he, the one thing he says is, if necessary, document and prove your point. Just don't complain for the sake of complaining, which I, I, I like that. That's, uh, I, you know, that's good. The second one, that's not my problem. Uh, it, it's similar to the, the commentary with it's not fair. You know, it's much better if you offer to help uh, solve a problem that you see as opposed to saying, well, that's, you know, that's somebody else's issue. Yeah, course, I, I like the 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 framework of making the comment hey i know it's not my responsibility but here's the here's something we may want to try or something if you're trying to help somebody solve a problem that's the the flip side of the that's not my problem because yeah. I, I always i can't keep my mouth shut you know i'll sit there and think well you know i, I know that's not my department not my uh, responsibility but here's a, a suggestion you may or yeah <laughs> something wanna, offering something that might be helpful yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Speaking of the word problem, uh, he says, when someone says thank you, the correct response is you're welcome. It Do not say no problem. Saying no problem might be thought to convey the same thing as you're welcome, but it implies that there might have been a problem to begin with. You're welcome implies that it was your pleasure to help. I love that. I do too. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, words are so powerful. I just read an article last week about the power of using two two words when you're closing every email, every proposal, every phone call, if you're in the business of selling things. And instead of just saying goodbye, whatever you is, you should always say bye now. Oh. 
And, you know, you're constantly reinforcing buy now, buy now, buy now. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's pretty tricky. I like that. Oh, yeah. I like constantly. this. Every email, your signature, buy now. Here's, the, you know, whatever. Not You're not pitching it. It's just buy now, buy now. And, and over and over and over again, it just becomes in your vocabulary and people constantly hear that and that, it, you know, huh. that changes huh. behavior. It yeah. does. That's interesting. The one I, I, I agree with this a hundred percent saying no problem in, in place of your welcome can impl offer implications you did not intend. However, the phrase you're welcome especially with, with a lot of Gen Z folks has been replaced at least in part with, of course, say, it's, Oh, thank you so much. And they say, of course. Uh, yes, and I, yeah. and, and I like that too. It, it says the same thing like, Oh, of course it's, it, you know, I, I was happy to help you. It, it communicates the same, your welcome message, but it is part of that group of vernacular and so yeah, I find good, myself good I find myself adopting that depending on who I'm talking with and and whether which I think will land better your your welcome versus of course right like you know yeah I, so I, I share that it it is it, it, reading the room is is a good thing and I I do try to um, mimic the language of people that I'm uh, that I'm immersed with too a, a, yeah to a degree. Yeah, and I, and I like that. Of course, is good. I, and I, now that you bring it up, I hear my my kids using that quite mm -hmm. frequently. Uh, well, they're Gen Zers. And yes, there you go. But one of the things that I like added to that is a phrase that reinforces the fact that you did something for someone, but also builds some future, a bridge towards uh, uh, the future. And that is saying something like, "Oh, of course," and adding, "I know you will do the same for me." Oh, yes. Because you're, you, that's why you're doing it. You have this connection. It's all about reciprocity. Yes. And you're, you're trying to add value to the relationship, but, but it's just a, a good little reminder. It's like, oh, of course I, I know you will not, you would. Oh, I interesting. Know you will, I know you will do the same for me because, you know, someday you may need them to do the same for you, whether it's. That's a little aggressive. Making... I, I would not say will, I would say would okay, yeah. in those scenarios yeah. I, 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 yeah. because will implies like will is a command right whereas would yeah, is yeah. a well, sentiment it softly, I mean, yeah 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 but it, it's a command versus a sentiment i you know but i mean I, like I, I i'm not saying if you choose to say will instead of would yeah. that that's wrong i'm saying i i will sure. use the phrase would to deliver it a little more softly yeah, any any grammar AI will change that and say, uh, "Don't use a passive voice." <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, but it, it's very calculated. Uh, there are, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's interesting though. I, yeah, it is. It, I'm gonna think about this now. I like this feedback at businessbrain.show. If you're uh, thinking about this too, this is a great email, David. Thank you for sending it to us. It is uh, the uh, to 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 bring this home. The last three start with the one phrase you. Uh, it's better not to say at work is I'll try. And the mm, reason is if you, yeah. if you ask someone, if they can have something ready by noon, you don't want to hear I'll try. That implies they may fail. You want to hear I will. That small change speaks volumes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the, it's, sure, the, it's the Yoda, right? I mean, always think of Yoda yeah. do or do not. There is no try. Do not. Yeah. yeah. If you need more time, that you need to have that Ask discussion for right more now. Time. It's like, okay, I can get it to you, but I I think I'll well, I will need till one p.m. or whatever. Yes, uh, yes. You can't get it. Done. Being just as confident with needing more time than than hitting the you know the the deadline, I think is it's good. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. want to communicate confidence. That, That's what yes. we're talking about here. I think I mentioned that last week when I always would ask, "How much time do you need to get it done?" Let them tell you. Yeah, it works out better than you setting the deadline. My favorite one on this list is number five, Shannon. The phrase not to say, but we've always <laughs> done it this way. If somebody says that to me, I am now hell bent on changing it. Like, <laughs> I, right. like, I, like, like to my own detriment. I, I, like, I just don't. That is not a reason to keep doing things. It's a, it's no, a reason a that the flag. He, it's a red flag. It is yeah. a reason that the human mind likes that. We like patterns. Patterns become our shortcuts. 
right? We do all our, our brains do all kinds of things where it, it like it always does it this way and it will continue doing it this way unless we change. And that way we're not thinking about these things all the time. But saying we've always done it this way. No, no, that's not an excuse. Yeah. That is an observation. We've always correct. done it that way. That's correct. Let, let's talk about whether or not it's worth changing. Yeah, it doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it right. It makes it it makes the statement correct, perhaps. You know, we've always done it this way. And the answer is probably no. We've done it this way for the last five years, but before that, we did it a different way. You know, it's it's the yeah. but the the my management counter to that is let's try something new for two weeks, right? You know, using the two yeah, week experiment. I like that. Yep. Yep. So yep. That's good. and the last one on this list, Shannon. That's impossible. And someone <laughs> says that's impossible. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't I think the 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 way the response to that is like, well, what if it were possible? How would we how would it be implemented? How would we do it? Uh to get that uh mindset thinking uh and changing the whole frame of the discussion to, you know, if you had every resource at your fingertips, if you had all the experience and education you needed how do we make it possible? All right. So look here on business brain, we know that project management tools are supposed to help us move faster and stay organized. But if you're still jumping between 50 different tabs just to do your job, then maybe you haven't found the right tool yet, but we have, that's where notion comes in. Notion allows you to pull everything together into one place, tracking tasks, deadlines, managing sprints, organizing launches. And today I'm excited to share that they just launched Notion Projects, which includes new powerful ways to manage projects and leverage the power of their built-in AI features too. Notion Projects combines project management with your docs, your knowledge base, and AI so you can stop jumping between tools and stop paying too much for them too. In just one workspace, you can do everything you need to get your projects over the finish line from brainstorming to drafting launch plans to organizing sprints and keeping everyone on deadline. And Notion's super customizable too. You can view projects any way you like. There's also powerful filtering and even automation features so you can work the way you want. Do your most efficient work with Notion projects. You can try it for free today at notion.com slash business brain. That's all lowercase letters notion.com slash business brain. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. Go right now to notion.com slash business brain and our thanks to notion projects for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you know that I've talked about how one of my favorite litmus tests before I offer somebody a job is to take them out for lunch and watch how they interact with wait staff, right? Because that tells me a lot about what kind of person they are. But if meeting face-to-face -face isn't an option, well, I've got something for you. It's our sponsor, Checker. Checker provides fast and fair background checks and can help see the things we can't. In fact, I think this is something to be used in addition to taking somebody out to lunch if you have that opportunity. Checker makes it easy to get fast, comprehensive results so you can hire with confidence. Just sign up, select a package, start a background check. It's that simple. And Checker's advanced tech and proprietary data network delivers 98% of nationwide criminal checks within one hour. It's got all these built-in tools to help you stay compliant with the FCRA and local laws, and it takes the bias out. Best of all, Checker is commitment-free with affordable pay-as-you-go pricing. I love this. And it's customizable to fit your small business's needs. Take the guesswork out of the hiring process. Sign up for Checker today. Right now, Checker's offering you, our listeners, $40 off your first background check. I know. Visit our special URL today to save $40. Checker.com slash business brain. That's the word check and then the letter R dot com slash business brain. C-H-E-C-K-R dot com slash business brain. Checker.com slash business brain. And our thanks to Checker for sponsoring this episode. So last week... We talked about urgency, uh, maintaining yep. a sense of urgency. And we got a note from listener Patrick about that episode. He said, toward the end, you started to discuss how you keep track of projects. And I want to share my process. 
He shared some notes with us that come from one-on-one meetings, a one-on-one meeting with one of his direct reports. He says, I have a 30-minute meeting with each of my direct reports every week. Every week. To be fair, he says, the meetings are mostly about business, but anything is fair game for discussion. I've talked people through their divorce or issues with their kids. If a personal, if their personal life is a mess, it will be difficult for them to perform professionally. As the leader, you need to know this so you know when to push and when pushing will be counterproductive. They schedule the meeting with me, but I take notes. The notes are about deliverables from them or their team. Uh, And he says, I color code some of them. These are typically items that have been in the notes too long or might be a more important uh, item. Uh, He says, this is why I take the notes. I want them to know what I think is important. And I want to make sure I communicate that other items get put on hold. I can clearly show that as well. I usually cross out completed items so that they have a to did list. As soon as the meeting's over, I send them a copy of my notes that I, he says he uses a typeinator snippet, which is kind of like text expander that titles the email with the date and the meeting. This finds makes it, you know, finding the email simple. And he says, I also use the notes for employee reviews, which is a huge help since most reviews only include the last three months. But this way I can easily look back at an entire year or more. I think this is fascinating. I, I love this. Simple yeah, and effective, too. right? Yeah. I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, because looking at these, uh, you know, uh, Patrick sent us kind of a, a snapshot of, of these notes. It's great. Yeah. It's just an ongoing. Uh, Simple little list. You know, it's nothing. Yeah. 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 You yeah. could keep it in the, the notes app on the Mac or, you know, whatever on, on your phone or on, on your, your com- other computer. Uh, it, it's, it's really powerful and it's, it's threaded, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on, which I think is great. Um, I also really like this comment about um, understanding and being aware of where the employee or person is coming from in their personal life and how it impacts them at work. I think that's a, ter- a terrific thing to understand and know when to push and when to back off and give a little bit of uh, leeway. I think that's really I made, uh, terrific. I made the error of sort of mandating that we keep our personal lives out of work very early on when we started, I guess it was Mac observer. Yeah. That was the first real business that I, you know, started where we were managing people and I made it clear. I was like, look, you know, whatever you've got going on, whatever I've got going on, we leave that at home. We do our work. I I was wrong by the way, folks, like this is not a good path. And I remember one of my guys coming to me fairly early on. He's like, look, I know you don't want to know about this kind of stuff, but it is impacting. Like he basically read me, you know, Patrick's reasoning, uh, in a different, you know, (laughs) from a different angle. Yeah. But he's like, look, I've got this thing going on. I think he was moving into a new place. He's like, I need money for a, a a down payment. He's like, is there any way you could, uh, you know, front me my next paycheck or something? There, you know, it was a it was a reasonable request for a a fine reason. Like there was nothing, there were no red flags even about this. But he didn't feel he knew that this was explicitly verboten. But he also knew that he had to ask me about this. And as soon as he did, it was like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine, man. Like, yeah, that's great. And then I started thinking, oh, wait a minute. I think we might have set a bad policy here. Uh, you know, what I didn't want is people just coming to work every day to complain about all the stuff that wasn't at work. Right. It was like, look, sure. you know, I got stuff I can complain about. You got stuff you can complain about. It, let's just get the work done. Y- you know, that was I, that was it would my be great. It would be great if you could. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that not way. how but humans no, work, right? Like that's it's, the, it's that's not. It's just yeah. It's just not how it works. So yeah. I I learned that lesson thankfully uh, very quickly and pretty much head on. It it didn't take very long for me to realize. Oh, okay, wait a minute. And then and then I remember like a year later, I had to tell him, no, 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 you changed my mind on this. Like it's okay. We can talk about this stuff. It's fine. He's like, okay, I just didn't, I didn't know. He's like, I remember you saying, I'm like, I know. And that's the other thing. Employees have memories better than elephants on stuff like this. Yes, they do. If you tell them something as dumb as it might be, they will hold it against you. Uh, And even after you tell them, oh yeah, that thing that I said was dumb, ignore it. They know that you thought it at one point, right? Like, because that's why you said it. And so they, in their, in their minds, like even with this guy, it was like, oh yeah, 
I'm so glad you brought this to me. Yes, let's, you know, we can, we can certainly front you the next check or whatever it was. And this is going to be great. Congrats on the new apartment. I was wrong. Feel free to bring this stuff up all the time. He still didn't feel comfortable because he knew that I said it for a reason. And he didn't quite realize that I change my mind pretty quickly yeah. when I'm ready to change my mind. Like he learned that since obviously, but yeah. it's, a, it's a very good thing to understand and try to strike that balance. And I, I found the more casual time you were able to kind of hang out with yes. people that work for you, the more you just pick that stuff up. So you don't have to ask, but you kind of get the sense you of just what's know. going on. And yeah. yeah. And, and we, you know, I, we used to do it with our, our lunches every Friday and barbecue and we did stuff and, you know, different things. And you you just know, and you can sense it and you go, Hey, maybe we shouldn't do your, you know, review right now or this, let's bump it a week or so. Yeah. And kind of see what's going on. So being yeah. self-aware of that, that is a terrific, uh, tip and, uh, Patrick, thanks for sending that in to feedback at businessbrain.show. And that's it. Yeah, Patrick also gets entered into our drawing to win a MacBook Air this year. We don't know which kind. We don't even know what MacBook Airs will be for sale at the end of the year when we do yeah. this. Uh, so who knows? We might talk about some other things Apple announced this week in our casual Friday show. So make sure to listen for that. Stay subscribed. We really appreciate it. That helps you keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.